What's up everybody? I have a special video for you today. These are going to be what I consider the most common AP physics test questions that you'll, you're likely to see on the exam for the topic of forces. So I can't guarantee that all of these will be on there, but I know some for sure will always, always show up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the number one question you expect should expect to see is um, free body diagrams. And this is, honestly, this is a no-brainer. You will most likely see this on a free response, and there will also be several multiple choice type questions. So just a few basics. Remember, you're drawing an arrow of the force acting on the object. This is versus by the object. So just kind of keep that in mind. Just remember what's acting on it, not by. You should usually, when they ask for the free body, you don't draw the components. Now, ultimately, you're going to want to figure out the components, but in general, just draw the pure forces acting in the directions. And then as well, you should know how to draw it to scale. That is to say, the length of the arrow tells you the strength of the force. So a short arrow would represent a small force, and a long arrow would represent represent a large force. So I'm going to do a couple simple examples and then throughout this video actually we'll be doing free body diagrams a lot. So for example let's just say we have a force, uh, sorry, a mass that's accelerating horizontally. Well let's do the free body. So the first thing is you're going to have gravity acting on the object, right? So that's always going to be down. Remember start from the center and come outward. And then we're going to draw the ground is going to also act on it. Now, since all the acceleration is horizontal, that means these two forces should be the same. So this is what we call the normal force. And again, try to draw the lengths to be equal to each other. Now, if there's an acceleration to the right, that means there must be some net force. So imagine something's pushing on the object or like there's an applied force, for example. And then if there is friction, so watch if there's friction, then there must be a force to the left opposing that. Now, since it says there's an acceleration to the right, then our friction force should be smaller than our applied force. Let's do an example just real quick. What if it was said constant velocity? If it says constant velocity, that means acceleration is zero. And if the acceleration is zero, that means we would want to draw friction and the applied force to be the same. So this friction, so you want these two to be the same. You know, maybe this is 10 newtons, maybe this is 10 newtons. Okay. All right, let's do another one. What if this is our objects like accelerating upwards? So again, we would have gravity. Let's say gravity here coming down. And then there must be a net force. Whether there's, imagine like a rocket or something, there's a thrust force going up. Well, it, since the acceleration's up, we would also want to draw the thrust force up, and it should be larger than the force of gravity. Once again, if it does say it's a constant velocity, then we should draw both of these to be the same length, equal lengths. Okay? All right, throughout this video, actually, we're going to be making lots of free bodies, but you need to know the basics. The second most common problem I see is that of the inclined plane. You should be guaranteed to get an inclined plane problem, most likely a multiple choice. So let's do the free body on this. So we will have gravity coming straight down, right, as usual. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you don't want to draw the components. Let's say this was an FRQ. You don't want to draw the components on the um, free body. You want it to be the pure force. So we have the normal force. Remember the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. So our normal force is going to be perpendicular. And then depending if there's friction or not, and depending on the direction of motion. So let's just say it's freely falling here. So there would be, say, an acceleration this way, or at least the, the motion is downward. Then the friction would be opposing that. So we draw some friction coming in this direction. Now, one of the key things you need to know how to do is how to, what I call, fix gravity for an inclined plane. 
So what you do for this is, again, you have gravity coming down this way, right? And we're going to kind of rotate our axes so that this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis. And that means part of the gravity is on the plane, part of the gravity is pulling down the plane. So the angle theta that's given here would also be the angle theta here. So when we draw this out, so this is going to be a free body diagram with just x, y components. So our normal force is going to be the same, our friction is going to be the same, and then this component and this component, one goes into the plane, one goes down the plane. We're going to just solve this. If you want to see more detailed, I have a video for that, but just know that this is going to be mg cosine, and this one coming down the plane is mg sine. So when you set, when you get set to solve the problem, actually let's go ahead and set up the summation for this problem. So once you've set up your fixed free body, then doing the summation is easy, right? You just simply say oh, in the horizontal direction or our new horizontal, it's just going to be mg sine theta minus friction equals ma. And then in the y direction, it's going to be uh, mg cosine theta is equal to the normal force. Now these problems become more complicated if you're pushing up or down. So for example, maybe you're pushing uh, down the plane, right? Then you just add like an applied force this way. Or you're pushing at an angle, then you fix that. But anyway, if you know the basics for this, you should be in very good shape. So speaking of pulling at an angle, this is the third most common question to see. So let's say, for example, you're pulling with an applied force at an angle like this. So our typical free body, again, we're going to have kind of gravity coming down. We're going to have friction to the left, assuming there is friction. And then you're going to have kind of a normal force going up. So this would be our pure free body. Now what we are going to do, now don't do this as your final answer, but maybe off to the side. If you have an applied force upwards, that means part of your force is horizontal and part of your force is vertical. So I usually do just an on the side free body that has the components in it. So let's say we have gravity going down. Let's say we have our friction still going this way. And then we're going to draw the applied force in the x direction. Now if there is an acceleration, as we mentioned before, then this horizontal force should be larger than the friction when you draw it out. And then there's an upward force this way, we call this the applied force. Now one of the key concepts that they want you to understand is that if you're pulling up at an angle like this, the normal force is not going to be equal to gravity. Normal force is not equal to Fg. Because you're pulling up a little bit, right? And so these two forces the normal force and the applied force, when you add these together, this and this should add up to the force of gravity. So a common question is, how does the normal force compare to the force of gravity? Well, in this situation, the normal force is going to be less than gravity. Again, because your applied force is helping to pull it up. What about if you push at an angle? Well, this would be the opposite, right? So if you're pushing down at an angle, that means part of your force is pushing down, Fy, part of your force is pushing horizontal, Fx. So in this case, just draw this out. So F of gravity is down this way, and then you're also pushing down. So you're pushing down against the floor. So your normal force is going to have to push with a greater upward force to compensate. So in this situation, the normal force would be greater than the force of gravity. Okay, I'll put a link to a more detailed video of this situation in the notes below. Let's move to the next one. The fourth most common question, and my oh my AP test writers love this question, is this Newton's third law question. And we all know Newton's third law, sometimes called the action-reaction law. But what you want to look at the language is how does the force acting on object A from B compare to the force acting on B from A? And the answer, of course, is that they are the same, right? They're equal and opposite 
to one another. So let's do a couple examples of this. So some of the favorites are like little guy versus big guy pushing against each other. Who pushes with more force? And the answer is they're the same. Or earth versus moon. Who attracts with more force? Again, the answer is the same. Okay, or let's say you have a baseball bat. You hit a ball. You hit a force with 50 newtons. How hard does the ball hit the bat? And the answer is the same. A lot of times the way they'll phrase this question is they'll say like, oh, big guy pushes on little guy with force F. Big guy is three times the mass of little guy. What is the force? And the answer is the same. It's F. It's not 3F. It's not 1 third F. It's going to be F. So anyways, this question comes up so many times. Just keep your eyes out on it. Again, the language you're looking for is how does the force A on B compare to the force of B on A? When you see that language, that should trigger you. It's a Newton's third law problem. Let's move on to number five. So the Atwood machine problems. The AP test writers love these. So there really are three common ones. There's the one that I'm showing you right now. There's the one where you have like two masses on a pulley that looks like this. And then there's the one with the inclined plane. You should expect at least one of these. But if you're going to only learn one and learn it well, it should be the one I have showing on the screen. So the first thing you should know how to do is how to do a free body diagram. So you do this on each mass. So we're going to do the force of gravity on this mass here. And then the tension. Now the tension will be less than the force of gravity. Actually, it might not be less. Let me rephrase that. If it's accelerating downward, then the force of gravity will be greater than the tension. Because it has to accelerate, right? So there needs to be a net force going downwards. So for mass on the table, again, there's going to be a tension. Now these two tensions should be the same. Okay, we have force of gravity here. And if there's nothing else, if it just looks exactly like this, there'd be a normal force. And there may or may not be friction. So if there is, we would draw in friction here. If there's not, you would just leave it blank. So there's your free body. Now a question they're often going to ask you is what are the, is the acceleration? To do a full derivation, that's kind of outside of the scope of this video. It usually takes five to ten minutes. So let me just do it kind of conceptually. So remember acceleration is equal to like your net force divided by your mass, like your total mass. So in this particular problem, notice the thing that's accelerating the object is the force of gravity of this mass down here. Let's just call this mass one. And then friction is going to kind of oppose that force. So the net force we would say is the force of gravity of the mass coming down minus friction trying to slow it down. And then we're just going to divide by the total mass. Well, that's going to be the sum of the two masses involved. So M1 plus M2. That's it. Notice if there is no friction, this problem does simplify dramatically, right? That would just cancel out. So I'll link to a more detailed video for these type of problems, including this type, which is a true Atwood machine, and then the incline Atwood machine. But hopefully this will get you started. So I know this was supposed to be a top five, but you know what? I had to give you a bonus. So if you stuck around this long, guess what? You get a bonus. So with static versus kinetic friction, the key thing to realize is for static friction, this is always less than or equal to some number, okay, using, say, mu fn. So let's say, for example, the mu fn is, uh, I don't know, 50 newtons. That means it takes 50 newtons of force before the object will start moving. Kinetic friction, on the other hand, is always equal to mu times fn. Again, these mu's would be different. This would be a static mu. This would be a kinetic mu. And kinetic's always going to be less than the uh, static mu. So let's say, for example, it's 30 newtons. 
Well, a problem I'll see a lot is maybe they say, um, oh, you're going to push an object with, say, uh, 40 newtons of force. Like, what's the acceleration? Well, a lot of times students will say, oh, since kinetic friction is 30, then when I do my summation, it's going to be 40 newtons minus 30 newtons, so the net force is 10. But you never overcome came static friction. You needed 50 newtons even to get it moving, right? So the true answer in this case would be an acceleration of zero. So always, always, when you see these problems and they give you both static and kinetic numbers, first check to see, does it move? Is, does it overcome static friction in the first place? And once you've done that, then you can do the kinetic case. If not, then it's not moving at all. Let me just add one last caveat. Let's say um, you push with 40 newtons, okay, in this problem, and they say like, oh, how much static friction is there? Well, if you just purely calculate this, you get 50 newtons. But you can't push back, like if you push with 40 and there's 50 maximum static, that means the object's going to move backwards. That's impossible, right? Static means it's not moving. So the correct answer to that question would be the same, 40 newtons. All right, I hope that was helpful if you made it this far. Thank you very much. Um, please, please, once you've finished the AP test, come back. Let me know if any of these showed up or if none of them showed up. I'd be very surprised if none of them showed up. But yeah, I'd appreciate that. Anyway, hope you have a great day. Good luck on your test.